Hey there viewers, thank you for tuning in to Super Mario Diagnostics once again. Today we are working on a 2013 BMW Z4 with the N20 2.0 liter engine in it. Today we are actually going to go through a step-by-step -step, uh, process of a valve cover uh, plus gasket set replacement. And the reason is because, well, it's, it failed the smoke test. It had uh, boost codes and it was leaking like a sieve out of one of the seams that are between the PCV uh, system and the valve cover itself. And um, let's get right into it. First things first, let's go ahead and uh, take off this cover. There are two hoses here that you guys are going to want to be aware of. And those hoses are right here. When you pull on this cover, it will pull one of them automatically and the other one will come off as well. I usually like to start off by doing the easy stuff, which is disconnecting disconnect galore just disconnect everything as much as you can they tell you to disconnect the battery but we're not doing that on this one it's not a re it's really not a big deal we're just disconnecting everything in sight people and hopefully you guys can see all of this and we'll just start lifting up these coils we will be removing these supports here and set these aside I usually like to keep them in order in the way that I took them out but that's really up to you that's just a preference of mine this vehicle is pretty low for me I'm uh, six feet tall and uh, this is gonna be hard on my back so I'm actually gonna lift the vehicle a little bit for my convenience all right let's go ahead and remove those supports and I usually use a regular socket. I don't really have an E socket that's bigger than big enough for that. It's not really not a big deal. Uh, if I remember, nope, I don't remember correctly because I don't memorize stuff. But this looks like it's going to be a 15 millimeter. That's right, people. I don't memorize every size of every bolt. <laughs> if I did that, I would not be able to learn anything. I have a very limited space in my brain. We're disconnecting injectors right now. I do hope you guys can see this. Basically, anything electrical that's over the valve cover is going to be disconnected. We're going to set the harness aside. And one of the things about the Z4 is that it's so, so accessible, all of these things. Like on any other car, you would have the cowl over the vacuum pump, which we will have to remove for this job. But here, it's, it's just like right in your face. It's amazing. I don't, I'm not even sure if I've, that I've done a Z4 of this uh, engine. Now that I notice, it's extremely accessible we're going to disconnect here this is the um, wastegate actuator we're going to disconnect the hose that goes well it disconnected itself from the turb from the wastegate so let's not forget where that goes and um, we've got a couple of o2 sensors here we're just going to remove them from the bracket don't know that disconnecting them will be absolutely necessary but if so we will do so and we've got this let's move this over that is our valvetronic connector we've got this vacuum line just gonna move we're just gonna set that aside for a second and i want to get this rail off that is usually my next step after removing these eight millimeter ground points so let's do that first That way we can move our harness completely once we get that fuel pump out. But in order to get the fuel pump out, we need to get the rail off. So let's do that first. Usually it's 17 and 14 millimeters. That I do remember because I see them so much. And 
you know, a lot of people are going to get on my case about this, but this is a very cold engine. There's no source of ignition around here. And we're just going to gently remove that 17 millimeter and let it, uh, let that fuel come out. If you want to play it safe, go ahead and bi-directionally depressurize the system if available. If not, you'll have to do that manually by disconnecting the fuel pump and running it till it dies. Me, on the other hand, this car has been sitting here for a while. It's cold. Um, usually these systems tend to depressurize all on their own after a long time. So we're not worried about that right now. Slowly, don't assume that it's just not filled. That one still had pressure in there. And if you feel like you should wear goggles, go ahead and do so. This is all at your own risk. You're watching a video, but don't let it substitute common sense. No. Which is ironic because I'm not wearing goggles and I'm talking about common sense. Um, but once you've done you've done this plenty of times, I mean, it's really not a big deal. A couple drops came out at best. And we're also going to let go of the lines at the injectors, which is the 14 millimeters. We're just going to break them loose for now. This is actually a pretty easy job for uh, for someone who does this for a living. But, but this is by no means something that you could just walk into a shop and say, Oh, I saw a video. It's super easy. Um, it's super easy if you know what you're doing. <laughs> if this is your first time ever seeing something like this, don't go into a shop and say, Oh, I saw a YouTube video. It's super easy. It's insulting. <laughs> Anywho. I am going to let go of this bracket here. It, it, it is a plastic bracket. It is two Torx, I believe. This is a, a T30. And that al allows our rails to come up. You will have to remove some harness out of it. And I don't know if you guys can see this. We're basically just letting go of this clip down here. We're not ripping things off. We're just gently moving, taking it out. We're not ripping it off, proceeds to rip it off. <laughs> All right, that's what we're removing right there. All right. Now we have full view of our rail, All right? We could just go ahead and remove that, cover the ends as you go over the paint the body we don't want fuel on paint so that's why we do that this other one is pretty loose for the most part if you guys can see this way over here don't know that you can um, I'm gonna I think I'm gonna set up another camera so you guys can see this this vacuum pump has a little vacuum line coming to it let's not forget where that goes right set that aside wherever you want and you're going to want to be careful with that nozzle right there. Do not break that. <laughs> I don't know if they sell that little nozzle by itself. But we're, we're going to assume they don't. Alright, so here we take off the rail. We're going to need some female Torx. I don't know what the actual name is for it. I don't really care. And the size is an E8. If you don't have an E8, there's other options. Like I said before, if you want to play it safe, use the right tools. E8 is the one we're using right now. And that is just to remove the mounting brackets for our rail. So these little pieces come out. And we're going to carefully remove this rail. All right? Let's not forget our little rubber grommets here we're going to leave it with the valve cover and we will make sure that it goes back on once the new valve cover comes and assuming it doesn't come with it already so everything facing upward we're going to move this around and not get fuel all over the body let's go ahead and remove this little insulation and we have two torques 
they look like the Torx we were already using before, T30, and they are. And we are only doing a tiny bit per side. You don't just release one side all the way. You do one by one, little by little. Same with installation too. You don't just install one bolt, tighten it down all the way. Nice. You should make a mental note whether there's a little bucket in there or not. In this case there is, if you guys can see this. Sometimes that likes to grip onto our plunger here and that bucket will just get dropped and if you're not paying attention, it will be lost. And then you have issues down the road. Now that gives us the clearance that we need to remove this harness. So pulling on these tabs right here, we can do that. And there's two of them that I can see so far. We may need to remove this actuator in order to fully get it off. Yep. We're going to have to remove this actuator. Oh, no. We were able to get it around. And let's see. We're going to have to remove these clips here. These clips as well. Um, set all of this aside and we will have to disconnect our O2 centers so yeah press down on that tab pull back and set all of it aside and we're almost there we're almost there I'm just going to start breaking these bolts loose And we have a vacuum uh, tube that goes from the booster we're going to have to remove. And I am going to bring down this vehicle. And we're pressing both sides and pulling back carefully. There's another bolt here that we're going to remove. Man, I love the access. It is unreal. Usually you have to use a vim set i may have gotten the tool size wrong but it still did the job anywho i usually have to use a quarter inch vim short stubby uh setup in order to get these bolts out but with this i'm using my 3 8 and it's great and my favorite ratchet this one here it is my favorite ratchet <laughs> it is a harbor freight ratchet it gets the job done. They sell, Harbor Freight sells a ratchet that has two flex points. And I remove the center one and create this with a single flex point. <laughs> so in case you didn't know, you're welcome. Enjoy it. It is awesome. I've never, ever skipped a tooth on one of these. And I give it everything I got. We got one last bolt down here. Really hope you guys can see this. This is only three bolts back here. And yes, you do have to, there's no other way around it. You have to remove this vacuum pump in order to get it out. So I like to is there one more on this one? I don't think so. It's on there really good. Do not use anything plastic. Any of the plastic parts in order to remove this vacuum pump. Wow, that is on there really good. I'm just going to grab my uh, flathead and gently we're using we're putting a new valve cover i could pry against the valve cover it's not a problem 
but we're gently gonna remove it. Right now we have everything exposed. And we are going to start focusing on the front part of the valve cover. I'm going to remove these Vanos solenoids. And for that we are using the E7s. E7s, if you don't have these, you may want it. You may want to do it. I said earlier you could use regular sockets, but when it comes to sizes this small, I highly recommend that you don't do that. I highly suggest you use the right tool. Bigger sizes is not such a big deal. But these, they are. I believe these are both the same part number, but just in case, I'm going to keep them in the right positions as I found them. And we are replacing those o-rings as well that's all it is it's just a little solenoid plunger so. and let's just take this one off real quick we are finally there we're gonna remove this valve cover we need we're, we're going to remove the bolts first using a E10 socket and I usually like to start from the outside in you know four corners work your way in is it gonna make or break this thing I really don't think so we're not reusing this valve cover anyway but if you are reusing this valve cover you may want to do this in a certain way you don't want to just willy-nilly it, as they say, right? But, we're going to treat this as if we're reusing this valve cover. Whoops. So we're not going to reuse this actuator. We're actually going to transfer it over to the new valve cover. So let's just go ahead and remove it. But if you are reusing your valve cover, there's no need to remove this valve. You know what? I forgot to remove this flange right here. Let's go ahead and remove that. This will help us uh, have some flexibility when we're in there. Not flexibility per se, but I guess clearance would be a better term for it. That way we can move it around a little better. There we go, goodness. Of course, it is a good idea to Take a look at the chain stretch while you're in there and this thing is tight now these engines are known for having uh, chain issues so you might as well do it while you're in there um, these don't have timing covers so you don't have to worry about uh, seams between mating surfaces you don't have to worry about putting some kind of silicone in between those seams this is in and out just about <laughs> now we're just going to clean up all of the mating surfaces and lucky for us this is not a poorly poorly maintained vehicle everything is in pretty good condition now would be a good time to take a look at those cams document whether they are messed up or not Let's go ahead and grab a new paper towel here. Of course, we don't want anything falling in. And when these these uh, 
corrugated I don't I forgot what they're called uh, when these harness shields are all brittle you are gonna want to keep them far far away from the engine because they will release all kinds of crap into it let's just get the rear real quick If there was old material, we would be uh, uh, using other tools to remove them. But right now, everything is perfect. This is the ideal job. This is the perfect case scenario. Your mileage may vary. If you're doing this and you see that that valve cover didn't just come off easily, you have to really tug on it. You're probably going to be dealing with much more of a cleanup than what we are doing here so keep that in mind there's no uh, simple way of uh, just doing this and getting it done as you can see we're all dirty here we're going to be cleaning this once we get the new valve cover on it was my mistake i guess i got caught up with the video i probably should have cleaned that up before removing the valve cover but we're going to do it anyway once the new one is on um the idea is Obviously, we keep it clean and we see if it's leaking afterwards. We can confirm our repair. All right, so we've got the new valve cover. It is actually the next day. Uh, believe it or not, in Florida, it's actually a little cold today. So we're going to go ahead and uh, install this new part. It came with everything, came with all the bolts, the gaskets, and uh, except for this flange. This flange you will have to order separately along with the Vanos uh, seals as well. So let's go ahead and mount this thing and there will be noise today <laughs> gotta love the no rtv necessary portion of it all uh there is a tiny sequence to all of this and we will go ahead and uh observe it all right so we're just going to um bring these down in order according to the uh tightening sequence so And finally, we're going to torque it down to 80 inch pounds. All right, our valve cover is in. Let's go ahead and put our flange back on. Of course, if you aren't using power tools, this will take you a lot longer. If you're doing everything by hand, you can expect to spend way more time than you're seeing on this video. So keep that in mind. I'm actually on the auto stop mode on these Milwaukee's for anybody who's familiar. And that's not good enough for us. So we are creating a new thread on these on this cover. The rest I'll do by hand. It's just snug it up, people. It's not rocket science. Don't go crazy though. At this point I'd like to get the backing pump out of the way. So we're going to go ahead and install it. There is a new seal already installed. You're going to want to clean this mating surface first. So I'm just going to grab a rag and clean it up real quick. I don't usually lube it up. Don't see the need most of the time. It's usually a pretty easy fit.
And of course, we're going to have to line up the cam. There we go. And make sure that dowel pin goes in. There we go. Let's put our, go ahead and put our bolts in. We've got one bolt here. We've got another bolt here. And one bolt down here. We're just going to zip those in real quick and snug them up. I'm not tightening it with this tool, I'm tightening it by hand. I know I'm going to get some kind of a torque Nazi on my case right now, but um, we're going by fuel. Whoops, <laughs> can't even see. Let me go around this car. We're going by fuel, people. Experience, mistakes, all of these things um, add to the feel, <laughs> this concept. Go ahead and connect the vacuum pump, get that out of the way. We also have the line that came over here. Same as with the vacuum pump, we are just cleaning off the uh, mating surface. And I'm also going to clean it up a bit. It's a bit dirty. Uh, I don't want to put it in like that. Let's go ahead and mount this thing. I'm doing this one completely by hand because of the nature. Like if you can feel some spring force due to that plunger uh, fighting up against the pump so we're going to evenly tighten this thing the next thing i'd like to do is the rail we're going to carefully put it in place and I mean carefully due to the fuel you don't want any dripping fuel on the paint so let's go ahead and put this bracket on I believe these will be creating new threads as well. I'm just going to start it with my impact and then finish it off by hand. We're not going to tighten it down completely just yet. We are going to install all of our lines first. And then tighten it down. All right, everything's tight now. We can tighten down our brackets. Just snug, people. No pull-ups. I don't get this thing where people want to tighten them like animals. That's why I'm using such a small wrench. You can really feel it. Let's go ahead and grab our harness. 
and I will have to allow for this adjustment here and hopefully I didn't hopefully I didn't have to put my harness on first before my <laughs> fuel pump but if so it's not a big deal and we are good to go almost we are clipped in and our O2 sensors can't be mismatched so some of them I've seen some cars where yeah you can mix, mix match them uh, let's go ahead and put our oil cap so that nothing falls in there I don't know about you guys but every chance I get we are I clean these that seal I don't like it to be you know just accumulating dirt it can be it can create a vacuum leak and will cause running issues so keep that in mind let's go ahead and put that on we're going to we're going to do a final cleaning before releasing the vehicle obviously so not to worry about little dust dirt or anything like that this kind of just fell into place didn't it um let's see let's go ahead and put that there let's go ahead and connect our injectors uh, we're going to clean all this stuff up before releasing it to the vehicle but for the sake of the video we're just going to assemble everything and deal with that i'm probably gonna just you know plug up all of the coils and um wet it down with some degreaser or brake clean and vacuum it out preventing any anything from going into the uh, spark plug wells this clip didn't survive i will have to go ahead and uh, replace that Go ahead and put this bracket back on. So we've got our place for our harness out here. Let's go ahead and put that something like that and then we can adjust afterwards. Got this clip over here. We got to put our vanos uh, solenoids back on. Can't forget that. Let's go ahead and connect our Valvetronic actuator. Tug on it, make sure it doesn't come off. And we are almost done. Uh, let's connect this pipe here. Let's go ahead and put our fuel pump helmet on. And last thing will be the coils. Um, but before we do that, we need to tighten down our ground points. You can cause problems if you forget to tighten those down. Once you get a feel for your tools, you know it's going to be tight, but we're just going to check it anyway. It's, it's just as tight as I want it. Let's go ahead and install our vanal solenoids. You will have to put the connector facing down. You are able to install it facing up. Don't ask me how I know. <laughs> I learned a lot of things the hard way. But, anywho, face them down. 
The seals do not come with the valve cover gasket set. You will have to buy them separately, just like we did the, uh, with the actuator, the Valvetronic actuator flange. And we are using only BMW parts. Um, yeah. I'm a huge advocate for OE parts unless aftermarket has actually made something better but that's just me and of course we're gonna do the final tightening by hand using my favorite quarter inch tool ratchet I mean the Titan never misses a beat, never skips a tooth. Of course, my autofocus. There you go. Never misses a beat. Titan. Love this thing. So we've tightened all of our fuel lines. We've got everything on. Uh, we're just missing a few minor details. Let's get our coils back on. We've got our vanos connected over here. We've got our tube connected. We got our, our harness the way it came in, putting the clips back on, and I think we are almost there. We've got our coils here. I'm just going to place them there. A couple of things, as I mentioned, we are doing off camera is replacing that clip, cleaning the vehicle, cleaning this area, and doing the relearn or the refill of the fuel system. So just keep that in mind that it's not included in this video. This is not a race. This is not about who can do it the fastest. This is simply a tutorial in order to, you know, let you know what's involved. And if you feel like you have any doubts whatsoever, please consider hiring a professional to do the job. Because things can happen. You can end up with a misfire afterwards. Uh, you can end up with running condition issues afterwards and you know, want somebody who's been there, done that million times, they can handle it. But if you get somebody willy-nilly um, who thinks it's easy enough to do but is not prepared for what happens after if everything doesn't go perfectly smooth, well, then you are you are uh, not in, in good shape there. All right. Got this clip down here. Last clip there. Um, we've got our turbo actuator, the wastegate actuator that we need to install. Give it some brake clean love. And if I remember correctly, this was facing downward like this. Be sure to tug on the connector slightly just to make sure that it is tight and it won't go anywhere. One last thing. The installation of our support here. But I will keep it all loose for now just in case I need to remove it to clean everything better. So that just about wraps it up. Let's keep in mind, fellas, that everything that is um, necessary taking place during this job here now is now in camera. There are going to be some things missing, like the priming procedure for the fuel system in order to prevent any da damage to the high-pressure pump. Um, any relearns that need to take place 
that's going to happen as well and also i'm going to redo my smoke test in order to confirm the repair and make sure that there's no other leaks anywhere present in the vehicle and obviously let our um the diagnostic portion of this job because this this is an r and r but this is an r and r to address a uh symptom and a concern so it's not just oh uh, it's leaking and we're just going to do it no we have to finish this video i mean we're going to finish this job off by confirming the repair doing another smoke test going for another test drive taking checking our fuel trim numbers making sure that there's no way that those codes any codes can come back uh concerning a uh, vacuum leak because that's why we're doing the smoke test after the job if you enjoyed what you've seen today i would uh, uh suggest you subscribe <laughs> stick around until uh, more videos come out and um, i hope you all enjoyed it. i hope it was useful information uh, once again this is not to arm you with uh, haggling uh, st strategies when you go seek a professional to do this job when a professional does this job they do it easily they do it a million times a day uh, constantly and they tend to know what they're doing so it's not really for you to haggle their price their price is their price i mean that's just that's just a little side note there um this is not that's not the intent of this video i wanted to make that clear the intent of this, this video is just to show what is involved in the job if you consider it doing it yourself that's that's great but just consider the the risks involved yes it seems like it's just a valve cover but you know if there's issues down the road you're gonna have to have the uh the know-how, the equipment, and uh, the diagnostic strategies in place in order to resolve them. If not, you're just going to end up taking it to a professional anyway, and it'll probably make things a little more difficult since somebody was already knee-deep in the vehicle. So something to consider, if you have any doubts whatsoever, consider uh, seeking an a automotive uh, professional that has done this a million times and will resolve any issues that you have uh, pre during and post repair so um thank you all for watching i appreciate you all for taking the time to uh, do so and if you like what you see hit like comment let me let me know your thoughts what did i miss you know i always miss something right um how did it go for you when you did it for, you, for yourself did you uh did everything go smoothly did it not uh hopefully it did and um thank you all for watching until next time